I have been in the software asset management space for um, 25 years or so. And, you know, uh, it's been a long journey. I've done everything from program setup to audit to true ups. And the one thing that continually um, is a challenge, even after 25 years, is keeping and obtaining additional support for my program. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Some key strategies to maintain and grow your program based on obtaining leadership support. So, door in a mall. And I actually worked for JCPenney at some time, which is a retailer here in the US and James Cash Penny, um, Penny had this quote, growth is never by mere chance. It is a result of forces working together. And definitely software asset management is all about the forces that you bring to the table to work together and to obtain whatever is your objectives are. And the objectives are always different depending on organization and also depending on the um, maturity of your team. You may be trying to grow, you may be trying to maintain, but one of the forces that you must um, put together is that of leadership or executive support. That is probably, it is the driving force. And we're gonna talk about how we obtain that today. So, what do I mean by executive support? And why is it so important? First of all, visibility. And that's not walking into a room and they see you. What it means is when they're talking about whatever issues are uh, upfront, um, affecting your organization, it's about somebody saying, well, we have a software asset management program to um, address those kind of issues. And I think that person's name is Beth Kaminsky or the other people on the team. I think Paul works for Beth and we should give them a call because they might know. That's what I mean by visibility. And it doesn't happen right away. And I would say also visibility doesn't happen if you come into an organization and as the saying goes, you burn a lot of bridges or you make a lot of enemies. So visibility is about joining forces with others so that um, when they think of problems and solutions to problems, they also think of you. Resources. And generally speaking, I'm not talking about resources here that are about money or about people. We'll get to that in a minute. What I'm talking about is who are the people in the organization that can help you out? And that is very important, especially if you're new and especially even more if you're new to software asset management, because somewhere along the line, you're going to need to understand what the challenges are because you're there to address challenges and to optimize or to make things compliant, whatever the needful things are. And by resources, I mean the people that you can reach out to and ask questions. And so those are executive support, but it goes beyond that. It might be the director of infrastructure or the director of um, financial management or the VP of human resources. It just depends. So when I say resources, I mean those other folks that can answer questions for you and can complete the story um, around um, the objective or goal that you're working towards. Funding, that's pretty obvious. Um, funding can go anywhere from funding for people, funding for tools, funding for um, space in the um, 
in in the building a lot of times depending it sometimes if you're working for government it takes um, funding to get space for people to work in um, funding for tools that could be for software asset management tools it could be funding for um, third party folks that come in with help that help you with things like Microsoft um, EA negotiation or with um, um, a Siemens um, optimization effort. So funding has a lot of different um, app applications and you need to get executive support or someone to sign the checks. And that is very important. Now, people that I'm not talking here about funding for um, for paying the people. What I'm looking for or talking about here is adding people to your program. If you're going to hire, I would say you're always better off finding somebody that's been working in the organization for a while. And that is especially true if you've come in from outside. Seven years ago, I came into Dark Container and um, no software asset management at all. They brought me in to um, start a program where there was none, there were no tools, there was no program, whatever. And they brought me in, they were being proactive and brought me in to stand up software asset management. I remember when I first saw the job description um, and applied, this job description uh, was like 10 pages long. And it was like everything that a mature SAM program would do. And it's like, I remember my first screening phone call and I'm like, look, this is all great. I can do this, but I'll never be able, never, never be able to do it by myself. I'm going to need people. And so I came in and there was an understanding that we would add to the team. And I didn't have the, all the funding to add senior people, but I knew from past experience that there were certain people that worked in the organization that could be helpful to me. So in other words, they had some, maybe not all, but some of the skill sets. And it was my leadership that helped point those people out. And I, my renewal person, my software renewal person that works on the team at DART, she came in that for, as recommendation from the head of IT because she had been doing it for a while. She knew all the renewals and um, she was all set to go to handle that part of the SAM journey. And so that is what I mean by people. Another example at DART, I brought a gentleman on who had worked in engineering. I had originally come true software asset management person. I kind of look at software, but I don't know a lot about what the organ, that was a problem about what the organization does. But this gentleman had handled the software licensing for engineering for many, many years. So um, leadership once again said, this is a guy that I think can help you out. He's been very helpful, not only in um, working the manufacturing um, application folio, but helping um, me learn about um, manufacturing applications and all the different aspects of the folio. And that's what I mean by people. I mean um, those folks in the organization that are already there, they're already embedded into the political kind of workflow kind of tasks that you're going to need as part of the team. That's what I mean by people. So just to break it down, resources are about um, 
other people in the organization that can help you answer questions. Funding is about paying for all the needful, including people. And people is about finding people that are already embedded in the organization that um, are familiar with all the pieces, parts that maybe you don't know about or that you need to augment your skill sets. And finally, strategy. And I uh, underlined this because that's probably one of the most important things that you need to understand and from your executive team or your, um, your leadership. And organizations, they have town halls or they'll have a company survey, but that only goes so far in telling you, what is this, what is making this organization tick? What do they need? What is it that is that you could do for them that would rock their boat so you can get more visibility, resources, funding, and people? What is it that is top of mind? And we all have goals. We all have um, the top five corporate initiatives, right? They're all very general. And here, when it comes to strategy, I think it's more about a, um, it's a listening skill. When you're talking to executives, listen, listen for what they are saying are their, um, their top priorities. So as we um, go through, we talked about visibility. Be top of mind when people are talking. Resources. This is, this is the people that can help you stitch it together when you come in. Funding. That's obvious. We talked about, but it's not. It's funding for all the things you need. A lot of people just think it's about people, but it's more than that. People, that's who in this organization can really help me out right? Sand people are very expensive. And so can you find people that are already doing the skills? They just haven't officially been called out as sand people. And finally, strategy. What is it that rocks your leadership's boat? So that's all great stuff. It sounds like a lot of blah, 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 right? Um, but how do you do it? How do you go about getting all that stuff when you don't know who they are? You, um, you don't know what the objectives are. I didn't when I came into DART seven years ago. I knew all the things I needed, but how did I go about um, getting it. So the first thing is corporate objectives, corporately. And that's pretty, you're going to find that um, on, in, as I mentioned before, in your town halls, um, perhaps in the, um, the budget, budget. Now, would you think that you could find Sam? And when I did my intro to this that was out on LinkedIn, I said there are things that I would talk about that you might not think about. One of the things that um, is um, top of mind when it comes to corporate objectives is get the current budget. And if there is a budget for next year, get that budget and scrutinize the mess out of it. Because what you'll find is that when you look at the budget, you're going to start to see by budget line items, not only where the um, emphasis is by where the funding is going, but you're also going to start to see categories of different kinds of 
initiatives, objectives to, um, to concentrate on and to understand what your executive support needs. Those are the things that you're going to say, well, this is what Sam does because we understand best practices. And we're not talking about best practices here. I'm assuming that you're getting that somewhere else or that you're, um, you're already experienced. It doesn't matter. This is for beginning, beginners or for um, people with experience. But you're going to understand by looking at corporate objectives where to apply the best practices where it will meet corporate objectives or um, initiatives and move your program forward by getting that all important support. So I usually these are published. Um, I would, if your corporation has a town hall or the CEO comes out and gives an end of the year um, session or a beginning of the year session or a strategy session, I would watch it live. I would watch the body language when they're talking about what they um, want to do and what the objectives are. You can tell a lot from that. Also, if it's recorded, I would watch it again and I would parse it to see where is it that um, it seems that the body language or the intonation tells me that this is really important to your organization. So that's corporate objectives. Talk the talk. So we in Sam, for IT asset management have a lot of, um, we have a lot of acronyms. We have a lot of things that we talk about. I know, um, I like to tell stories. I know when um, I'm sitting down with my family for the evening meal, right? Um, I start talking about something that I'm working with and I start talking about GDPR or SAM or ITSM or HAM or any number of things. And they look at me like I have three heads. Be careful when you talk the talk about using too many acronyms when you're talking to leadership. They don't live in your world. It's, I think it's hard to understand if you've been in um, a discipline for a long time. Like for me, it's been 25 years. And I forget that people don't know it like I do. And that generally speaking, a lot of time they don't know what I'm talking about. Even folks that are on the call today um, you have an interest in the subject. You are um, well aware of what some of the objectives and the goals are. Your leadership does not. So be careful that you talk the talk that they can understand. Put it in terms they understand. So in other words, it's software asset management or it's IT asset management. Um, um, here we use ITFM, it's IT financial management. Just remember that you need to talk the talk at the level that they, that leadership or executives understand. That also means that you need to kind of keep it at a high level. Um, it's a, um, one and done quick kind of thing when you're talking to executives. They have a lot on their plate. Um, you are just one of the many people that they talk to on a given day. And so keep it straight, keep it to the point, keep it high level, and make sure that you understand that when you're talking to executives, you're hitting all the high points. Just like they would if you heard two 
um, executives talking to each other. So talk the talk. And so that's really important to understand who you're talking to. Get FaceTime. Okay, so how, oh, this is great, right? Unless um, you um, never get in front of an executive. Um, they're too busy. They're not gonna look at their, your email. So this is a, this is a hard one um, to understand. And this one is usually more about working up in my mind, working up the levels. So if you work for, if you're lucky, you work for the, um, the head of IT, but not all SAM people do work for the head of IT. So um, sometimes you have to work your way up to get that face time. And <clears throat> I would suggest that to get face time, which I think is really, really important, is that um, you start with who your manager is, is are you working for a director? Hopefully, hopefully you are working for um, a leadership partner at your organization that can um, provide introductions on up and are at a high, high enough level that they can do it. And once again, you need to, you need to tell them that you need help. I don't know how many times in my career I have gone into someone's office and say, you know, I really need help. And there's nothing wrong for asking for help, especially um, when you look at the SAM discipline and generally across the board, I would say that most of us, including myself um, at DART, I'm a program manager. When I consult, I'm a consultant. I really don't hold a, um, a high leader, uh, leadership in IT, but a high leadership position in, um, the, in the organization. And one of the reasons around that is generally our teams are small and uh, titles come with the number of people that work for you. And so there's nothing wrong with saying, I have this initiative, I have this thing to do, and I need help. And if you help me, I know it will help you out. And that is so important. Always emphasize how you can help everyone else because you can, they may not realize it because they don't talk the same talk you do. But if you talk their talk and say, if you help me, I can help you. And every time I ask for help, um, I have as many times as I've asked for help, I have um, asked for um, them to help me. Well, help me or offered to help them. When you're in a conversation, say, I can help you out. I know how we can help you out. You're always thinking the wheels are always turning around how you can help people. And by doing that, hopefully, and asking for help and asking for FaceTime, you're not going to get FaceTime unless you ask for it. It's just that simple. You have to ask for it. And then there's another thing that I say about FaceTime. Understand that the people that you'll be talking to may only have a few minutes for you. Be succinct, be to the point, and be ready to go. Um, just like this morning, um, it was like, it was 9.30, and it's like, we're ready to go. Be ready to go. Have your stuff together. Because once you blow FaceTime, 
it's really, really hard to get it back. In other words, the CIO is saying, I don't wanna see that person again. She wasted my time. Do not waste their time. You usually get one chance at FaceTime and it's over. Um, dress the part, be ready, have your presentation, practice, practice. There's nothing wrong with practice. Practice sitting in front of your CIO or CFO or CEO, practice. Practice sitting in front of your um, director that you directly report to or a senior director or a VP of an another area. Make it as concise as possible and always be ready if um, they have questions. Another thing that can happen, oh, you got their attention and um, they're really, really interested. But when your five minutes was up, they had more questions, but you weren't ready. Be ready for anything. Be ready to talk for an hour. Have a five minute presentation, but be ready to talk for an hour because you never know. And if your FaceTime goes well, you stand a chance of getting it again. And this holds true. A lot of us are all on um, video now, right? Or like I am today. Doesn't make any difference. Pretend like you're in the room. Treat it just like you're in the room. If you don't feel like you can talk to an executive in your pajama bottoms, don't do it. And that is... Um, I'm a big one on that. I think you need to be ready and that has to go with your whole persona, right? I'm big about that. It goes back to my window dressing marketing um, background and it's all about how you present. So get that FaceTime and don't blow it. Next, what do you do? You sell it. You sell it, you sell it, you sell it, you sell it. And I believe that at its base, standing up a software asset management is a marketing effort. You need to not only reach out to executives, but reach out to your communication department. Look at your policies. Um, do you have a procurement policy? Do you have a um, software asset management policy? Do you have an audit policy? Get those published on a regular basis. If you have an internet, get it out there on the internet. Write an article if you can, or do a um, little webinar for IT. Whatever it is, sell it. And when I say sell it, I also mean you need to be able to um, talk about how I can help you. And when you get in front of the executives, we talked about FaceTime, keeping it to the point, I would think that very carefully and not too blatantly, you need to sell what you're trying to accomplish during your FaceTime. How can I help you, Mr. CIO or Miss CIO? How can I help you? This is what Sam can do. These are the tools we have. Always be thinking, once again, I'm going back to how can I help you? And then how can you help me help you? And you sell it and you sell it and you um, socialize it over and over and over again. And on the, the, say, the lower levels of IT of your or your organization, if you're working hard and you're getting um, a little visibility um, amongst your peers, and maybe one of your peers is saying, you know, um, the software asset management team told me something today that I think is very interesting. And I think we should talk to them. And they take it up to their manager and maybe their manager talks to your manager 
and they said, um, you know, I heard this about the software asset management team. Try to make sure your manager is selling it too. You need all the help you can get. I mean, a lot of us were thrown into this um, way back when, didn't have any idea of, um, I'll be honest, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I got a bunch of software spreadsheets. I had no team and I didn't know what to do. And so I learned and then I started to market and I started to market and they needed people and I started to market and market. You got to sell your program. It's just not going to shine on its own without you bringing up the needful. Sweat the small stuff. This is probably the biggest thing that I've got to tell you today. Everybody thinks that it's about the, um, the big audit where you, you say the organization um, couple million dollars, right? Oh yeah, you need to highlight that for sure. You gotta highlight it. But there are also two things that are very important when I say sweat the small stuff. One is the idea of risk mitigation and cost um, or compliance mitigation or whatever, the stuff that didn't actually cost money, but it could have. And that is extremely important to keep track of. Always, always go and figure out what it could have cost if it happened, what it could cost. Or the thing is, the tr say you're doing a Microsoft true up or a Microsoft EA negotiation, enterprise agreement, negotiation. And last year's um, or your last enterprise agreement was worth X. And this time when you help to negotiate it and first do the true up and then negotiate the software, you save $2 million off X. That's big stuff. Everybody knows that. But the little stuff like I saved, we terminated. This is a good example. We found redundant software in our portfolios and we terminated this and we terminated this and we terminated this and that we terminated this, adding up altogether over the year to a cost savings of $2 million. Well, because you were counting the small stuff instead of just $2 million on the big stuff, you now have $4 million that you can talk about in your FaceTime, that you can run up the chain about how the um, software asset management um, team can, um, you know, do corporate initiatives, meet the objectives, all that kind of thing. Keep a running total of everything, even the small stuff. It's not the big stuff. And I know when I was introduced, I was um, taught, I, I was told, you were told that I had won or the DART team um, had won the um, honorable mention from Snow Software. Thank you, Snow, for anybody that's using Snow or for um, anybody that's on here from Snow. Thank you very much. Um, that the um, transformation of the year, you know how we did that? We added all the little stuff, the big stuff but we sweat the small stuff. It's where the small stuff gets you recognition. They expect you to do a good job in an audit. Leadership expects you to do a good job on an EA or a new um, SAS negotiation. They expect that. 
what they don't expect is all the little stuff that you're doing to optimize on the way along. And so finally, before we get to questions, I have a story. And this is a story that is um, very pertinent to all the things we're talking about. I mentioned um, that I brought in people from outside the organization. I, I mean, from inside the organization, I did. I sent them to a training just like this one. At that training, they heard about um, compliance issues around fonts. And because I had, um, we had helped corporate communications out and we had talked to corporate communications there. I'm talking about that visibility and all that and reaching out other resources. They want to use a new font for a branding exercise. And they were going to take that font and they were going to put that font out on the company's intranet and share it with everyone. And folks could go and download the templates. Well, the gentleman who was working on the team said, wait a minute, I heard about fonts on, um, in a training I went to and that fonts aren't free. I bet they don't know that fonts aren't free. So he went and he asked questions and they ask us questions back and HR, um, corporate, corporate communications say, I need your help in licensing this. Well, lo and behold, when we did the um, analysis around it, with the cost of the font and how the font was licensed. If this company had done what they intended to do, it would have cost in a compliancy issue, $13 million paying for the font. Now, there you go. That's sweating the small stuff. And it comes from people reaching out, us helping. And you know what? What did I do? When I said that, I went to my manager and I said, you know what, we just mitigated $13 million. What do you think about that? And they were like, what do you do? What did you do? And it was like, in their language, I told them, we did this, we did that. And lo and behold, my manager took it to the CIO and the whole team was recognized for something that never happened. And from that day forward, everybody in IT came and said, oh, can you help me out? And then I said, well, if I help you, can you help me? And we sold it. We sold it over and over and over again. So sweat the small stuff, talk in a language that the person you're talking to understands. And then one last thing before we get to questions is for those of you that are just starting out, just take your time. It takes time. It takes a lot of, um, a lot of energy, a lot of stamina. And believe me when I say, honestly, I came out of retail and I dressed mannequins a for the first seven years of my career. And um, it can be learned. I learned every bit of it. I didn't go to college for software asset management. In around the year 2000, my CIO pushed a stack of paper this big across my desk and said, here's software licensing, clean it up for me. And here I am today. So I want to thank you all for joining.